Hello and konnichiwa. My name is Harald Seib. I work for IBM Systems and I'm going to talk about uh, adapting Swift to high latency storage devices. Uh, I'll explain the term a little bit more in a second. I'm working uh, on a project called ICE here. ICE as in cold storage, uh, together with a colleague from uh, IBM Research in, in Zurich and with our friends from BDT Automation Systems in Germany who are also present in the audience uh, in a joint project. The goal for our project is actually to uh, enable cold storage for media such as um, very, very high latency media. You probably had uh, the chance to go to uh, John's uh, session in the morning uh, regarding shingled magnetic drives. This is also in scope for what we are doing or related to what we are doing. Uh, and the, the main purpose is actually to further reduce cost on your cloud storage offering by introducing media that has not been yet uh, used in a, a cloud offering for cold archive purposes. So uh, with the reduced cost, of course, you go also got uh, some uh, drawbacks, and that is actually uh, that you uh, have to wait a little bit more for your data, so you get uh, reduced availability. The main idea is to leverage uh, Swift as the single namespace for your storage, for your objects, which could then reside on tape, media, tape drives within tape libraries, but in the same manner they, you could also potentially use optical disk and optical disk libraries, or even, as I mentioned, uh, the shingled magnetic recording disk that have special characteristics which are a little bit similar to tape, by the way, uh, or also systems that uh, require some spin-up time, such as the mate disks. And our, our goal is actually to in integrate that with your standard uh, Swift-based object storage uh, installation. We at IBM and also our uh, friends at BDT Automation Systems uh, focus on tape. As I said, this is only one potential uh, backend that we can use, but we see a great advantage in using tape for that media uh, because from a TCO perspective especially, so consider power, consider storage space, and uh, consider operational costs. Uh, tape could be as much as five to ten type, uh, times cheaper than disk. And also, if you look into the future, there is a tape roadmap that scales really quite linear uh, based on what we are able to demonstrate in the research labs today. So this year we had an IBM uh, demonstration uh, that showed that it is possible within the next 10 years to develop a tape cartridge that could hold up to uh, 220 terabyte on a single cartridge. Uh, plus, tape is also an established and major technology with a track record of more than 50 years uh, for now. And it is also already used in cloud offerings, not uh, as visible as other uh, underlying storage technologies, uh, but for example, in backup and archive uh, applications, uh, it is already being uh, used. Uh, for from a software perspective, we do have LTFS, the Linear Tape File System, which is a widely adopted standard uh, for uh, storing data on tape in a similar way as you are used to store it on disk. Of course, as I mentioned, high latency implies shortcomings that you have. So if you directly put tape storage underneath your OpenStack Swift installation today, for example, by leveraging the uh, linear tape file system, which exposes tape in a similar way as disk, you would experience uh, issues. Uh, one of the issues is of obviously the time to data. On the right, you see a robot. You have a lot of cartridges, but you have less drives. For cost reasons, drives are much more expensive than cartridges, so you need to move around uh, the cartridges uh, to get your uh, access to your data, which could take up to minutes in the single-digit minute range. So when you have multiple accesses from a lot of clients, uh, a lot of requests in parallel, of course, uh, you, you need to wait more and more the more your requests uh, you get to your uh, Swift cluster. 
Uh, and of course, uh, the, the resource availability is, is worsened by having fewer drives for um, a huge number of cartridges. So really, to, to have your, your TCO um, really play out well, you, you need uh, at least, for example, 100 cartridges per drive. And uh, so if you get random access, you could, could have a lot of resource congestion, uh, congestion by having requests waiting uh, for your tape drive to become free for the next cartridge uh, to be served. So our project actually was uh, to identify measures to at least make this, uh, these latency uh, implications a little less worse than it used to be before. And we concentrated on several uh, different uh, technical approaches. Uh, one is to make actually uh, the movement between a disk cache or even a disk ring within tape to a tape ring or an, an, a ring with an um, ILM implementation underneath explicit by providing a Swift API. So with this API, uh, we intend to provide uh, bulk operations. For example, to move an entire container in a single operation to a tape, which is much more efficient because tape, when at the moment when the cartridge is mounted, is quite fast. So you can get uh, data throughputs uh, of 100 to 300 megabytes per second with a single tape drive. So if you put, put down a lot of objects in a single run, you would have the efficiency of tape. Uh, we thought about uh, improved timeout management, so uh, increasing, for example, the timeouts in a Swift uh, installation. But actually, in discussions we had uh, at the last summit, it turned out that this is not really uh, acceptable uh, because it would require tweaking on, on different um, uh, layers at the, uh, in the Swift stack or even uh, affecting um, external environment uh, or equipment like uh, load balancers. Uh, so this is not really uh, practical. Also, to, to be able to cope with Swift auditing, the process that goes around and does the checksums on the objects, uh, we would need to decouple uh, the, the auditing uh, of Swift from an auditing that is tape optimized. So that's another um, part of the, uh, of the ideas that we uh, want to leverage uh, to be able to cope with uh, tape. And then uh, finally, um, we, we try to optimize the way we put data on tape to actually collocate uh, objects, for example, that are in a, in, a, in a single container onto ideally a single tape cartridge and not spread it across ta cartridges, uh, what Swift normally does when, when distributing the data across the entire cluster, across the disk drives. Of course, there are many, many different technical aspects. So uh, in the time between the Vancouver Summit and now, we actually focused on the Swift, what we call Swift ILM API. You would rather might uh, suggest to call it uh, tiering, but uh, we call it Swift ILM because it exposes the API to the applications in a way that they can control the information lifecycle management by potentially also uh, supplying um, rules when when to put the data on tape. Not even directly doing this, but probably also doing this in an asynchronous way. So the flow is from left to right on, on the graphic shown. And uh, on the left side, we have the client that uses the normal Swift API. But we actually prototyped a Swift middleware component that ties into Swift uh, that allows you to have three additional operations, which are actually migrate, that would instruct a backend to actually move the data between the disk, cache, and the high latency medium, uh, as well as having the recall operation for the reverse operation to get data back from the high latency media, and then an operation to actually query status of the operations, because usually these operations would be asynchronous. So you would kick them off, they would take some time, and then we would check back if the data is already migrated or recalled and get your status back. 
For that to happen, we propose uh, connections between the Swift ILM middleware and what we call an ILM capable backend, which we prototyped in two different implementations within IBM, with Spectrum Archive and within VDT with a tape library co uh, connector. Uh, that would instruct uh, the back end actually to move the data from the disk cache to the high latency media. And one, one approach to do that is to impose a, a swift uh, extended attribute on the object, uh, which then the back end can catch up and identify to move the data out. Uh, the other way is to invoke an executable uh, through the Swift ILM middleware that would then take actions to actually move the data down to the high latency media. And from an API perspective, this would look like uh, the following. So we would just add a modifier to uh, the, your Swift URL to migrate, recall, and get the status for your data. This, for some of uh, those who of you who know uh, the, the S3 and Glacier APIs, is a little bit similar to what uh, Amazon does uh, to move data back and forth. So we try to stay relatively close to, to that approach. And then uh, for, for bug operations, uh, we, uh, we suggest that you uh, put the very same modifiers for example, on container level, but we're also considering to allow you to put in some regular expressions, for example, to actually uh, also uh, get uh, requests um, for a cross-container content to, to migrate and recall the data. And obviously, for the Spark operations, you would get and then get back a request ID that you can then provide to a status uh, request call to track your progress on the entire bug operation. We are also proposing more advanced stuff that we don't see as part of the uh, of the kind of basic or mandatory uh, part of this ILM API, uh, but especially the first one, uh, the allowing you to set uh, ILM policy operations through the very same API, uh, really go more towards the approach of allowing an application to specify a really lifecycle along with your objects. So you could imagine that you could uh, put a migrate call along with some policy that after some given amount of time where the data is no longer being accessed, it will then automatically get migrated. And we propose that you specify this operation on, on using the very same API as the other uh, calls. Uh, other other things we, we could imagine could be um, the backend specific additions to um, directly guide the data to a specific tape library to even tape uh, cartridge pool or even tape cartridge or to have a coexistence with Swift 3, potentially providing a very similar interface to what uh, S3 currently has uh, for ILM to Glacier. Uh, if you now look at your Swift cluster, uh, the way you would introduce such a functionality would be to take your unmodified Swift cluster, add a dedicated data ring for your ILM operations, which is shown in the lower right uh, of the picture, and then add this ILM capable backend I mentioned from IBM BDT or your own implementation, uh, and of course add the Swift ILM middleware, and you're all set to do the operations. I will be around uh, at the IBM booth later today and also participating at the design summit. If you have further questions, please feel free to contact me afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>